Hello, welcome back to the fish locker out on the rocks. Now we've got an especially good set of big tides today. Those are perfect for going and exploring or for foraging on the shoreline. Now it is a horrible day. It's blowing a gale of wind and it's raining. I don't know if you can see the driving rain up here behind me. But I'm making my way along the shore as the tide ebbs off. Now I'm getting a bit of rain on the lens. I hope it doesn't spoil things too much. But um, we've got about another hour of the ebb tide is going in that direction we are going to follow it out for another hour and then turn around and come back already I've managed to find quite a few different types of shells what I'm going to do is as I find them I'll collect them and then we'll sit down at some point and we'll talk about them but you can see here we've got an invasive Pacific rock oyster limpets There's another big oyster there. See the size of it. Got lots, lots of different types of sponges growing under the rocks. You need to be careful on these because they are very slippery. Got some flat fern weeds and some little pom pom weed. A little bit of dulse. got lots of painted top shells about the place there was a lot of winkles just back there but I wanted to get myself around here quick oh there is quite a fancy dog whelk now let's see if I can find there we go believe it or not but they are the same species that one and that one are the same that one's just stripy and these actually eat limpets if you find any shells on the beach and they've got a little tiny perfect hole in the top of them it's one of those because what they do is they crawl up on top of a limpet and then they drill a little tiny hole in it and then eat it These are quite cool. You see them are like a little like a little cocktail glass or like a mushroom. And here you can see like these little tiny polyps. That is the young uh, thong weed. They start off like this, then they flatten off. Then out of the centre of those discs grows a long thong weed. This is some sea lettuce and some serrated rack. There, look. That was exactly what I was meaning. That thong weed starts off like these little polyps and then it grows that flat disc like that. And then out of the centre of it grows one of these. Some some kelp. Loads of sea lettuce. This is quite nice, nice to eat. We've eaten it in some of our other foraging videos. These are netted dog whelks. I'll make my way up there. That's an unusual one there. That's an albino. Still be top shelf. There's a big starfish as well. Here you see two different types of kelp. See that one's all crinkly and that one's flat. We've got a golden kelp and this is a sugar kelp.
loads of little red fern weeds. The place is where you're going to find your crabs and your lobsters and things. When we can get out, when the water goes out past these rocks, they'll be in like the little caves underneath these rocks. Quite a poorly looking starfish, isn't it? Get back in the water. Oh, that's that's something interesting. You see those there? That's actually um, a nudie branch eggs. I'll put the proper naming for them. And I'll take a photo so you can see properly. See that the wind's howling in here now. I don't know if you can see that properly, but the mother of pearl inside that little oyster there is lovely. Oh. See that? Is it a pie crust crab or a furrowed crab? There's a common blenny. Some porcelain crabs. A little queenie scallop. There's another queenie skull up attached to the bottom of the rock. There's a beautifully painted top shell, strawberry top shell. This bucket's starting to get in me, <laughs> it's starting to get on my nerves. I think I'm going to leave it here and pick it up on the way back. Oh, there's loads of them. These little furrowed crabs see if we can't get further out find something bigger Angry them, look at them. Well, he's a big angry male by them blue spots on the tops of his claws and also that narrow flap there underneath. A female, I think this one here is probably a female. Now, you, see, you see the difference? The, ma the female has got a big pad underneath for holding eggs and the male has a little pad. Loads of them. And furrowed crabs. Ah, been feeding on dead flatfish. That's why there was a lot of this rock. But there's a couple of things here. There is a little olive squat lobster. 
also there's a sea urchin oh and a beautiful little ocean star quite a saggy looking anemone back under there as well. What I'm looking for is I'm looking for flat rocks because they're easier to turn over and also because if they've got a hollow underneath them that's where the crabs are likely to be. Your big crabs and your big lobsters, you're looking for little caves. Actually got much time left so I'm gonna have to start heading back that way but yeah that, these rocks look perfect I'll definitely remember to come back here on another big tide I don't know how well you can see it but that area underneath that rock there that cave that is where you would expect to find your crabs and your lobsters now there's a bit too much water in it I haven't got a hook because otherwise I would just put a hook in there and feel around but yeah that's where you're looking for At times before when you come past you can sometimes see one, one like the red antenna sticking out Swing crab. Look at the size of that. moving around. I found one of these a while ago but it was yellow. This one's got, I hope you can see it, it's got like blue, blue spikes on it. Now the wind has really started to pick up, I don't know if you can tell. I'm going to have to make my way back around there before the tide comes in. There's a lovely anemone. Spinner. Stop. Take that. Venus clamp. We're at the bottom of the ebb now and it's starting to stir things up. There is another beautiful top shell. I think they're stunning. I'm 
I'm seeing more and more of these on this little bit, this little bit of coast. And it's one of two things. It's either called an oyster thief or punctured ball weed, as you can tell because it looks like a punctured ball. Yeah, there's quite a lot of them. They almost look like a blister, don't they? There's some wire weed. Scallop shells. And there's quite a few scallop shells around here. I think someone's probably had a feed. But those, I am not too sure. I will check up on those and let you know. Interesting, aren't they? There's another set of nudie branch eggs quite a few on this little bit there are loads of anemones down in here aren't they look there's four or five up there and there's one up in the back of there I might have to turn back, I've taken the wrong turn. That is a beast of a clam there. That is, that is alive and I could take that but it's too small. Just took that one back in there. What we're looking for. Got some big limpets. You see the bad weather that we've had has changed the shape of the beach. It's moved a lot of sand around. It's lifted the sand away and it's deposited all of the clams. So it's effectively dug the clams for me. There's one. There's another one. You can see that what I'm doing is I'm checking to see if they're open. And then if they're slightly open, you give them a tap on a rock. And if they close up, it means they're still alive. If they're still alive, it means they're okay to eat. You see all of these worm casts that were in the sand and as the sand's been washed away it's uncovering them. There's a perfect example of what I mean look. The water has just uncovered that clam and that clam for me.
There's another one, but a little too small. Again. That is a beautiful looking one. Too small though. Cockles as well, look. There's another one. There, look. Can you see how the water is washing them out of there? There's a nice sized cockle to take. Huh. The little guy hiding under there. Female shore crab. You see? There's a nice big cockle. Oh. And another one, that one's a beast. Nah, it's a bit small. I'll leave that one. Again, a little bit small. sorted through and I've taken out all the smaller ones now they're all still big enough to take but there's no point taking more than what you need and in there's plenty for me and my wife with some cracking clams I'll just cover these up and within a tide they'll be gone I've had a cracking little walk along a piece of coast that, that I haven't been to before I haven't been able to get to it before because the, the tides weren't big enough. I needed the tides to go out far enough so that I could walk around like a pinnacle, like an edge. I would just get there. Now we didn't find that we didn't find much, but it is winter. Just some furrowed crabs, some velvet swimming crabs. In the summer, I think that'll be great for uh, edible crabs and lobsters. Those areas are rocks. So we will be back there. And on the way back through, um, I showed you a little surf beach where because there's been an awful lot of movement in the water it's turned out quite a lot of clams I, uh, I'll show you a few now I did I collected some shells to be able to show you and uh, I slipped on one of the rocks and the bucket fell over and I lost all the shells in the water so I was like but <laughs> yeah we've got some um, some cracking Venus shell clams the king cockle some very big normal cockles I aren't entirely sure what that one is. I will research that when I go home. It could be a warty Venus clam. And there's one in here that looks like a manila clam. There's a crust cut carpet shell. There's, uh, where is it? There's some, a hard, a 
hard shell surf clam. There's like seven, seven or eight different types of clam there. And there was razor clams and gaper clams in this area as well. I didn't dig any out and I didn't have any salt on me, but I did see them. So yeah, we've, we've got a fantastic gathering of clams there. Because it's absolutely minging weather, it's, it's like a miserly rain and it's really windy. I aren't going to cook these up here, I'm going to take them home. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to get some clean salt water and leave them to soak overnight so that they can purge out any of the grit and any of the grime that we've got inside themselves. And then um, I'll cook these up tomorrow. We're going to have a little walk back along a different creek see if we, if we, to see if we can find anything else. If I find anything, I will show you. If I don't, then I won't. One of the things that might be worth noting is you see this plant here. It's quite common. I mean, you can see it all around in the hedgerows. It's common on hedgerows, roadsides, that type of thing in the UK. And it's called Alexander's. This is it here. Now it's not to be confused, it's not to be confused with hemlock, which is poisonous. This is edible. It's called Alexander's, I believe, goes back to Alexander the Great, and it was introduced to the UK, I think, in Roman times. It's been here that long that it's almost considered as being an indigenous species. But it comes up about now in springtime and lasts through quite a few months. But yeah, if you, uh, if you take up the new shoots and you steam them, it's quite like, uh, it's supposed to be a bit like celery or asparagus. There you go, Alexander's. Hi everyone, welcome back to the Fish Locker Kitchen. So I've got the shellfish that John's collected. Um, and we're gonna make a little bit of a different uh, dish. We're gonna do like a tomato based pasta one. Obviously we are on the beach, I'm in my house. So I've got access to more ingredients. So obviously the shellfish, some chopped tomatoes, onion, crazy garlic, got some olives, and then just some spaghetti to serve it with. So gonna get my ingredients ready and then we'll get cooking. So to cook it all in, you want a big pan with a lid. And we're just gonna heat up some olive oil. And we're gonna start by sauteing the onions and the garlic together. So you just wanna saute the onions until they're soft um, and the garlic until it's fragrant. So when you really start to kind of smell it all coming together, you know then you can add in your tomatoes and some seasoning. So just put that into there. And then add in about half a teaspoon of the lazy garlic. There we go. So we'll just let that start to sauté together. Now the shellfish, we've cleaned all the shells off and we've left them to purge themselves overnight. So that means that any sand or anything that they've kind of been filtering through should all be cleared out now. So it should help eliminate some of the grittiness from them. So our onions and garlic are sautéing nicely. Just going to add in the chopped tomatoes. I just want to bring that heat down to a bit of a simmer. I'm going to add in some salt and pepper. in the pan and ready. I um, just see it starting to come back up now. So I'm literally just gonna tip in the shellfish, give it a quick stir, and then we're gonna pop the lid on. And we're just gonna let it simmer away until all of the shellfish are open. So pop your lid back on, and we'll come back and check it in a minute. These have been on for a couple of minutes now. I've got the spaghetti on as well. You see those just starting to open, all cooking in to that tomato, lovely. Now, I am gonna add in some olives 
because I am an olive person. This is completely down to personal taste. If you don't like olives, don't add them in. Um, you could also add in um, a glass of white wine, just to add another level of flavour. Okay, so pop those in. Give it a little stir. Oh my gosh, it smells so yum. And then all we're gonna do, once the spaghetti's ready and this is ready, we're just gonna stir the spaghetti in with the seafood and sauce. So we'll pop that back on. And once they're all nice and open, we'll come back and uh, get it served up. Here we go. So these are all ready now, all cooked in that lovely sauce. Spaghetti's ready. I was gonna mix the two together, but I just, I think for presentation purposes, I'm gonna serve the spaghetti and pop this on top. So, make sure we get lots of the sauce. Take out the ones that didn't open because they aren't okay to eat. our doorstep. Amazing. How much would you pay for that in a restaurant? And that literally took, so probably like including the preparation time and stuff, start to finish maybe about 15 minutes. I think the spaghetti was the longest thing to cook. So you could serve that with lovely crusty bread. So you could serve that with lovely crusty bread, garlic bread. Um, yeah, that's the type of meal you want to be eating like out on your patio on a summer's night. So I hope this was useful and you enjoyed it. And if you try it, let us know. Thank you.